Hey y'all, it's Taylor. I am a full stack software engineer of seven years and today I am upgrading my internal network to 10 gigabits per second. About a year ago, I upgraded my network to be off of the all-in-one modem system and onto a more scalable and secure Unify system with the gateway and the access point. And that network has been fantastic. I learned so much setting it up. It's been a lot of fun and I'm ready to upgrade to 10 gigabits internally so that mainly I can have faster transfer speeds to my NAS which I use to store all my YouTube videos and all my personal files. I really just want to increase the throughput from my computer to the NAS and this 10 gigabit network is going to be the way to do it. This video is sponsored by MacPaul with their Clean My Mac software. Personally, I've been using Clean My Mac way before they decided to sponsor me and I love it for cleaning off cache files and just unnecessary files that are taking up space on my SSD. Be sure to check the links in my description for special discounting and stay to the end of the video to learn more about Clean My Mac and Setup. And this is the entire map of my one gigabit network. Here's a refresher on my one gig network if you haven't seen my previous video. Starting with my AT&T modem slash router. I disabled the router part, it's only acting as a modem which connects to my Unified Dream Machine Pro. This is my gateway which powers all my other devices. It kind of acts like the first switch in the chain. It connects to my NAS, which is a Synology DS1522+. Plus. This is a five bay NAS, and I currently have it equipped with 36 terabytes of storage. Also connected to my UDM Pro is my U6 Enterprise. This is my Wi-Fi access point. It is Wi-Fi 6E, and it provides coverage to my entire townhouse. Connected to the U6 Enterprise, I have my cameras attached, my PS5, and my iPhone. I have two VLANs configured. One is IoT with limited access to my network, and the other has full access to the network. Upstairs, I have a one gig TP-Link switch connected to my docking station and my gaming PC. This switch is connected to the UDM Pro, and it is connected via a 150-foot Cat6 cable. Now, Cat6 has a limited range when it comes to connecting 10 gig networks and I'm a little concerned that I'm going to run into trouble here with the distance that I need to go with this cable but we'll see what happens. The first thing I need to do is get the network card installed in my NAS so I'm going to go ahead and get my NAS shut down so that I can get that installed. My NAS was extremely dusty so I blew it out with this PC blower. Now it's time to install the 10 gig network card into the NAS now that it is nice and clean. And I'm having to use a little bigger bit than usual. I'm using a two size bit. If you have the iFixit kit like I do here, these screws were a little larger than I expected. I don't typically use a two size bit. And since this is kind of like a horizontal PCI, it should just, just like that, push it right in and then the screws will go right back in. This is a TP-Link eight port 10 gig switch. It does have a fan, which I've heard can be quite loud. So we'll see how that works out. And I do realize that TP-Link is in hot water with the US government right now. I am not storing national secrets at my residence unlike some people. So if someone wants to break in, they're gonna see you know, a bunch of YouTube videos and a lot of photos of my cats. I have my NAS hooked up to power and the original ethernet cable, which is this red one here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the this blue cable into the 10 gig port and then plug this into the 10 gig TP-Link switch. So now I have both. I have one gig for my original IP so that I can access my NAS and then I have the 10 gig that the new network is going to run off of but I'm probably going to have to configure that inside my NAS software so that's what I'm going to do right now. There it is. Um, actually, it automatically switched it for me. Wow, that was actually pretty cool. I was not expecting that to happen, but it did. Awesome. Thank you, Synology. Just another reason why I love Synology is like they design their software really well and really intelligently. I should be able to go into my console and actually iperf on this IP address and let's see what connection we get. And there it is, 9.39 gigabits per second. So we are right there at that 10 gig network. That is awesome. Okay, so that proves that this setup is now working. And I also have this Unify switch. This is a five port 10 gig switch, which I'll be using upstairs so that it can split between my gaming PC and my docking station. The final test is 
this guy because ultimately what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be connecting my upstairs computers to this switch. So let's see if I can get this switch connected with the TP-Link switch and still maintain that 10 gigabit network. So now these two switches are connected over 100 foot of cable, which is kind of reminiscent of what I'm gonna do upstairs, even though I'm gonna be using my 150 foot cable. But now I grab the same cable that I was using upstairs for my PC, and I'm going to connect one end into the Unify switch, and then the other end into the 10 gig adapter. So now this simulates the upstairs network with a very long ethernet cable and then a very short um, secondary ethernet cable connected into this secondary switch. And look, there it is, the USW Flex XG. I just click to adopt and it's gonna adopt it onto the network. That's what I love about Unify devices is you can kind of manage them all here. I can't manage the TP-Link because it's not Unify, so it doesn't have that um, ecosystem, but this is Really nice, I, I love this system. Um, do iPerf one more time to the NAS just to make sure that this whole setup is getting the full throughput. And it is, 9.4 gigabits per second. That is pretty close to 10, I'm happy with that. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this from this test bench scenario. I'm gonna put it upstairs and see how it all runs together. The switch that I'm replacing upstairs is a one gig switch indicated by this orange light on the right. Looking at the map on the TP-Link 10 gig switch, you can see that right LED orange means one gig and swapping in my Unify 10 gig switch now means that I am getting that 10 gig connection as indicated by the left green light on the TP-Link. Looking back at the chart, you can see that left green means 10 gigabits per second. After that, I ran an iPerf test and yes, oh my gosh, 9.4 gigabits per second, the exact same speed that I was getting in the test bench downstairs, which means this was 100% a successful upgrade. So what real world performance increase did I actually experience with this upgrade? I went from 67 megabytes write and 66 megabytes read to almost 200 megabytes write and over a thousand megabytes read. That speed increase is gonna have a significantly positive impact on my workflow, and now it's time to see how much I paid for it. The 8 port 10 gig TP-Link switch was $299.99. The Unify 10 gig switch was $229. The 10 gig Thunderbolt adapter from OWC was $199.99. The 10 gig networking card module that plugs into the Synology was $109.99 and the cute little patch cable that I used was $4. For just the 10 gig updates, it was $842.97. That does not include the gateway, which was $279, but I paid for that in my previous network setup. Was it worth it for me? Yes, this is exactly what I wanted. I wanted fast access to my NAS and this achieved it. For most people, I would not recommend this unless you have a very specific need for it. Paying over $800 for decade old technology is just ridiculous and it is mind boggling that 10 gig costs this much in 2024. You know what's not super expensive and has a ton of value? Clean My Mac. Click the icon in the menu bar to open up a 1000 view of your system where you can click into each section and see a more detailed breakdown and analysis of what exactly is going on. You can open the main app from this menu where you are greeted with various scans that you can run on the left side here. Down at the bottom there is an assistant which gives you a high level overview of your system health as well as some helpful recommendations. The smart care scan at the top is a full system scan. This will scan for everything from junk files to malware to performance. And once it is completed, it will give you an overview of everything that needs to be cleaned up. If you like taking a finer tune approach, you can click into an individual scan, run it, and at the end, it will give you an overview of the scan where you can go into each individual section and make fine tune edits if you would like to. Personally, I run the junk scan all the time and it has been super helpful to freeing up space on my Mac. If you're itching for more great apps, that's where Setapp comes in. It's a subscription-based app marketplace with hundreds of apps to explore. There is recommendations for you. There's new arrivals and recently updated apps. When you're ready to explore an app, click into it and you can add it to your favorites. You can share it. 
You can even view its version history, and finally you can see what other people are saying about the app. When you're ready to install, hit install and it will automatically install and open for you. You can also leave some feedback on the app or see exactly where it was installed on your system. When it's time to uninstall, you can uninstall the app itself or all of its files. There's even this super cool AI assistant at the top where you can click and ask it a question like what's the best app for software engineers and it will spit out app recommendations and a brief overview of why those are recommended. I can vouch for the DevuTools app. This is a great recommendation. I use this all the time at work and it is super helpful for software engineering. If you're interested in clean my Mac or setup, be sure to check my description for my affiliate links to these apps.